This video is a continuation from my Remove Accessories User Interface Part 1. This is going to be Part 2. I am going to add the code to my UI elements to list player accessories. So if I hit this button right here, we're going to get a UI element that lists all of our accessories. See, there's the bird, there's a backpack here, there's a backpack, and you can delete them, right? So go here, hit this trash, boom, backpack is gone here backpack is gone there. If you want to go ahead and add something, you can go here and it's going to dynamically update. Let's get the backpack back. Cool beans. And you can open and close this. So let's go ahead and get uh, started with that. All right. So like I said, this is part two. I saved off the video from uh, the game from the video from part one video. And I'll put this link in the description. You can click on it and then start exactly from where I'm at. Go ahead and hit these three dots. You won't get this stuff down here, but you'll get edit and then open it up, right? All right, so now we have the same starting point. Let's go and update the background color of this frame. I don't really like it. Um, we'll go to starter GUI and then screen GUI. Click on your act open button. I'm gonna make the background this color. So I'm gonna go and Extend this out a little bit. Look for background color three. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna do a control C, get the color of that button. I'm gonna hit my ACK mainframe, control V. There we go. And that looks better. Cool. Now I want to delete rows. I wanna add rows dynamically with code. So if you go to replicated storage, You'll see in the last video, I put this act row frame in replicated storage because we're going to clone that and add these to the player GUI. But we're also going to delete the accessories with a button right here, which means we'll, we'll need a remote event so that the client can talk to the server. We're going to remove stuff on the server side. So let's go to replicated storage, hit that plus remote element. And then I'm going to say act remove re so i'm going to have an act remove re so that so we can delete stuff on the server side from our gui cool what else should we do let's get started with server script service so we have our game manager and we have our accessories utils let's open accessory utils now this might be slightly different than the video this should be on update accessory Right, I just have up. I missed the I missed a couple letters. And let's see. Let's modify this by adding replicated storage, a variable to replicated storage. Let's do game get service. There we go. Get service. Replicated storage because I want to get that row and add it to the player GUI, not the starter GUI, but the player GUI, because we're adding things dynamically. I'm going to get another variable in accessory utils. I'm going to call this URL, icon URL. Let's make it icon URL. And this is going to be the URL to go to Roblox to get the icons for our accessories. And I am just going to put this in the description because it's really hard to get it right. There we go. I just copied it. Control V, right? Because you have a lot of URL encoding stuff in here. Um, you might make a mistake. So I'm just going to put it in the description. You can just cut and paste that, that line of code. Cool. Now we need a function, a helper function. I'm going to make that local. So local function get act main frame. This is going to get the frame off of the player GUI that we can add rows to for our accessories. So the player will get passed in here. We will say local, make a variable for player GUI, right? And that's equal player uh, colon wait for child player GUI. Right, so we need the player GUI because we want we want things to update dynamically. We don't want it on the starter GUI. Once that gets pasted on the player, it doesn't change. So we need to mess with the player GUI, right? And then we're going to have a screen GUI on the player GUI. So we'll say player GUI. Wait for child screen GUI. Cool. 
And then on the screen GUI, everything else is going to be the same as the starter, right? This is what gets cloned to your player. So you have the screen GUI. We need that. Act main frame, right? And that's where we're going to put all our rows. So let's get that. Let's do a variable for act main frame, and that's on the screen GUI. All right, so we've got the screen GUI, wait for child, and what do we call it? Act main frame. Act main frame. Cool beans. Now we have to return the act main frame. Right? So we're going to call this whenever we need this act main frame. We're going to call this function right here. And we're going to do it twice. That's why I made it its own function. All right, what else do we got to do? So when we open the window, when we open up our frame that has all of our accessories on them, we want to see them all listed out, right? So I'm going to do a function here that's, that's going to do that. I'm not going to make it local because I want to call it from other places. So I'll say function act utils, right? That's the name of the module script, uh, the table in the module script that we'll call. Get act info for the player. Right, and then we're going to get the character from the player. So we'll say character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight, just in case it's not ready. Cool. And now we can get our act main frame, so we can add rows. So this should probably be update act info. Yeah, oh, that's good enough like that. We'll say act main frame, get act main frame for the player, right? Now this is a variable holding my accessories main frame. We need the row that we want to add. We need a we need a copy of that row. So we're going to get that from replicated storage. Act row frame. Wait for child. Act row frame. Cool. Now we're going to do a loop. I'm going to go up a little bit. We'll do a loop. We'll say for i and v in pairs char uh, get children do. All right. So we're going to loop through our character. On the first level, we're going to get the children. We are going to look at the accessories on the character, but this will also get like hand, foot, head, torso. So what I want to do is do an if statement. So V is going to be the item in get children. I is going to be a counter like one, two, three, four. So we're going to concentrate on V and we don't want head and hand and foot. All we want is accessory. So we're going to say if V colon is a accessory, then we'll pay attention to it. Otherwise we won't. All right. Now we're going to take a look at our act main frame. That's our frame that holds our accessories. I want to check to see if there is a row already in there for the accessory. So let's go local. We'll say cur row equals act main frame find first child v name. So I am going to name the row in the UI the same as the accessory so we can find it easy and keep track of them. All right. So that row might not be there. It might be new. The accessory might have just been put on. Let's say if not cur row, then let's go ahead and say cur row equals act row frame colon clone. And we're going to make a clone of our act row frame, accessory row frame. We'll say act row parent will be the main frame, essentially, oh, act main frame, essentially attaching the row to the main frame, right? And then we'll make our cur row name the same as the accessory so we can find it easy. But also, let's take a look at cur row. Cur row in here, right, right here, act row frame is going to have this name label. The name label is going to display the accessory name. So that needs to be, needs to have text that is also the name of the accessory. Cool. Now we have these item labels, right? Where we're going to do the, we're going to do the, uh, the icon. Right? And then what I did here 
where is my server storage I put accessory IDs now these accessory IDs might not be the, exactly the same for you you're gonna have to check you're gonna have to open up your toolbox and then check to see where these accessories are mine are in my models I saved them off so I can right-click and get the asset ID I call that an accessory ID I meant asset ID right so that's gonna work for me the ones that I got from this toolbox will definitely work like uh, glasses and backpack will definitely work bird and hat might not because they might not be the same so you'll have to save them off and get them or get them from the marketplace cool just so that you know that I had a question about that this is a remake of a video because I made a mistake in it let me see where were we at oh we're gonna go to our accessory utils and I was talking about the asset ID so I'll say V um, what do I need I need to check to see if there's an asset ID on my V so I'll say V find first child right asset ID most accessories do not have asset IDs we added those in the last video so I am just gonna make sure that we have it on there so we don't get an error if it doesn't show up right so we'll say cur row item label image and this is going to be the ID that we get back from Roblox I made that icon URL up on the top that big long URL that's the base URL we're going to add a dot asset ID dot value right so we have this dot dot is a string concatenator this V is our accessory we'll have an asset ID on it and that asset ID will have a value it'll be a numerical value right so that's pretty cool but where are we calling this let's do this let's copy that control C and whenever we update a player with an accessory let's just go here plop that in there oh we don't have a player in this in this uh, function we have a character how do we get the character from the player well we get the player service from the game from game game dot players there's the player service cool colon get player from character add the character so now we have a player from the character this right here is a is a player right also I'm gonna add a little hesitation in here a wait just so that this gets added properly before we go searching for stuff cool let's try it out um, let's play it look at that now I have the bird that's one of my assets but this hat and these glasses are not one of my assets so if I open up the window I'm not gonna have images for those because I did not put asset IDs on those right but I do have it for the bird and I can't remove things yet but we will get to that let's go ahead and remove all non game assets so that we don't have this problem the player can only use assets from our game our accessories from our game all right so I'm gonna go to game manager and I will do a variable for the humanoid right char wait for child humanoid <clears throat> once I get the humanoid I'm just gonna remove all the accessories I'm gonna say hum colon remove accessories Oop, accessories and now when we enter the game and the character appearance loaded fires we're not going to have any outside game accessories on our players there we go we even lost our hair cool now we just have the bird all right so that's pretty cool let's go ahead and oh we should try and get let's get one from Bob let's go ahead and do it again it should display so Bob already has functionality for giving accessories cool glasses got glasses Oh, look at that we just got to do our delete now right all right let's do that and let's go to our acro frame right we're gonna go to the trash bin hit the plus sign we're gonna add a local script in the local script we're gonna call this like remove ack loc remove accessory local script cool all right remember we got to talk to the server so let's add a variable for replicated storage game get service replicated storage 
And then we'll add uh, ack remove re remote event. We're going to get that from replicated storage. Replicated storage, wait for child. Ah, there it is. Ack remove re. And then we need to get the accessory name. But that's not that hard, right? Because script.parent, that's the button. Ah, that's the ack row. And remember, we're naming the ack row the same name as the accessory. So we just have to do that. We got the name of the accessory. We'll get the trash button. Whoops, trash btn. Script.parent, that's the trash button. We'll get the trash button, get the activated event, connect that to an anonymous function. Now, what are we going to need to do? Uh, the anonymous, anonymous function is not going to need any parameters, but we're going to get our act remove re colon. We're going to fire to the server and we're going to say, hey, remove that accessory. And we don't have to tell the, what player it is because this is a local script. We're going to get the player on the server side because it came from a local script. So let's go to accessory utils. And you can add that any, anywhere in here above the return, right? And we'll say function act utils remove, oh my gosh, remove accessory. The player's going to come in because it's, it came from the client event, right? And then we're going to get the act name because we actually put that in there. We specified it when we fired, we fired to our server. We need the char, right? We have the player. So player.character will give us the char. Or if it's not ready, player.character added weight. That'll work. That'll get us the character. And then we're going to get an accessory from the character. So we'll say char colon find first child. We'll give the act name to get the accessory. But maybe it's not there. So we're going to have to do a check for that. Um, Let's get the ack mainframe so we can get our row and delete it when we remove our accessory. Well, we can do that from get ack mainframe, pass in the player. Uh, let's check to see if the accessory does exist, right? And if it does, we'll destroy it. That's how, that's essentially how we're deleting it, right? We're just destroying it. Then we're going to get the row from ack mainframe. We'll say find first child, Oop, and that's going to be act name, right? And then if act row, let's destroy the act row. Cool, act row, destroy. All right, this needs to be called. Where should we call this? Let's go ahead and copy this right here. Control C. Let's go to our game manager. And then when what I'll do is up here, I'm going to look for my remote event, my ack, oops, remove, if I can spell it right, re, it's in replicated storage, wait for child, ack, remove, re. We're going to catch the remote event in the game manager. I'll keep all the remote events uh, on the same, in the same file on the server side so I don't lose track. So we got our ack, remove, re, dot, on server event. So when we hit that button, connect to this anonymous function, we're going to get the player because it came from the client. And then we're going to have an act name because we sent that. And we'll do a control V because we copied that from our module script. Remove accessories. Voila, we are done. Let's check it out. Let's go hit play. There's our bird. Let's try it out. Delete. Sweet. Oh my gosh. I was a little worried. There we go. Backpack. We got our backpack. That's cool. Let's see. Uh, come on, accessory Bob. And we're going to get a hat. Let's get a hat. Cool. There we go. Let's delete the hat. I think this is working. Let's check for errors. Uh, output error is good. Or output window is good. Looks good. All right. I will see you in the next video.